Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are tuning in. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. I want to come to you and talk to you about why I stopped dieting and why you should too. Before I became so open about ditching diet culture, I used to recommend diets for things like weight loss and different body issues that people would come to me about. But after realizing the impact that dieting was having on me and the impact that it was having on my clients, I not so quickly realized (laughs) that things needed to change in a major way for people to really create the consistency, happiness, and things like that that they wanted to have in their body and in their relationship with food. So let's go ahead and get into five reasons why I stopped dieting and you should stop dieting too. Now, if you're not familiar with me, I am nutritionist Dandy Taylor, and I work with women to help them eliminate overeating, feel good in their own body, and finally consistently eat healthier without sacrificing their happiness or good food, okay? Now, if you are still watching up until this point, I want you to go ahead and share this video because we all know somebody who is dieting or has been dieting who have been affected by some of the things that I'm about to talk about, but they don't even realize what is going on. So they are living in a struggle that they don't necessarily need to live in, okay? So go ahead, definitely share this video. If you know someone in particular who needs to watch this, tag them in the comments, but share this out because even if you don't know somebody who is connected to you personally, who is dieting, a lot of people are dieting secretively and aren't saying anything, but they're also secretively struggling. So let's definitely go ahead and share this video out. Now for me, when I first started getting into, um, weight loss and things like that. Well, I'm gonna go back just even a little bit more than that. So I started having like a body complex when I was in grade school. Okay. When I was growing up, I've always been told that I was short and fat. I'm only five, two. So yeah, I'm short. Okay. (laughs) But I've never actually, well, I wasn't then I wasn't fat then when I was a child, but that started a body complex for me because even though I wasn't physically big being told that I believe that I was right? So when I got into middle school, I started to pay attention to my body even more. And when I got in high school, I was like in full-fledged eating disorders, right? I would go through um, go through my whole school day without eating. I would come home, eat like a cracker or something like that. Um, I would do like the craziest things I would do. I would just, I would never be in a space of like purging. I did know some people who were doing things like that back then, but that was never my thing. Okay. Me and throw up, don't get along. <laughs> but um for me personally, I was doing a lot of different things that were surrounded around starvation and um, treating my body just in ways that were really not supportive of me creating a healthier lifestyle. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm overweight. I want to lose weight. And this is what I'm going to do to get healthy. But on the back end of that, what I was actually doing was um, leaning further away from the things that actually could support me and being the consistently healthier person that I wanted to be and um, really get back in touch with my body because for one, I wasn't actually short or fat then. Well, okay, I'm short, but I wasn't fat, <laughs> fat then, but I had become that now due to dieting, due to the diet cycling and things like that. And we're going to get into that in a second of exactly why uh, people actually gain weight when they're trying to lose weight on dieting, which is another reason why I stopped. Okay. Because I was not consistently eating healthier in a way that felt good for me, for one, just um, in my mind, right? I'm eating all of this salad and what my aunt would call rabbit food. (laughs) I'm eating all of this stuff, but um, maybe I feel lighter in my body, but I felt extremely deprived in the way that I was eating. I felt like I was never having snacks and things like that. So when I would have those things once or twice, I would always find myself overeating. Like if you've been around me for a minute, um, Like if you've even been around me since I started doing health coaching specifically like five years or so ago, then you know I talk about how I used to binge watch uh, how to get away with murder and eat Oreo ice cream or eat a pack of Oreo cookies. And that was real for me. A lot of mindless eating and things like that. I was just completely miserable. I was completely miserable. It felt like nothing was going right. It felt like for me, I couldn't be the healthier person that I wanted to be. It felt like things were just going to be impossible for me, but also knowing on the other side of that, I couldn't continue to be physically uncomfortable the way that I was. And I couldn't continue to have the habits that I had, right? So 
for me, it was a deep dive into why do I feel this way? Why, why do I feel deprived? Why do I feel like I can't eat at certain times? Or why do I feel like every time I go to have a snack, I'm overeating and overdoing it every single time, right? What is the cause of this and how can I stop this? And I realized that dieting was the cause of it. And the way for me to get away from those things is to stop dieting. So what were those things, right? What, what were those things that caused me to stop dieting in a, in a very clear way? I'm about to lay it out for you right now. So if you are here up until this point and you've seen yourself in some of my stories, you saw yourself eating those healthier things, but still felt like it wasn't going to be something that was consistent for you. If you found yourself, you know, doing different outrageous things for you to uh, lose weight or anything like that, and I want you to go ahead and comment in the comments. Just drop me an orange heart, okay? Drop me an orange heart in the comments and let me know that you're here with me because I know it's not just me. I know I'm not alone in this henceforth and why I stopped encouraging people to do dieting because we're just going to roll right into it, right? So one, dieting is one of the main trailblazers for disorder eating. Now, disorder eating and eating disorders are actually not the same thing. They are very close and similar, but they are not the same thing. So a lot of us who are dieting actually have disorder eating patterns, but since we don't recognize that as anorexia or we don't recognize that as a purging after we eat, then we feel like we're okay, right? We're just working on getting healthier and that kind of stuff. However, I'm going to tell you what it really looks like for you to have disorder eating patterns and dieting because you likely have these and don't realize they are a part of the reason why you are struggling so much. Okay. Now, one of those things is you're skipping meals. I did this a lot. I just mentioned it to you when I was in high school, I would go the whole day without eating sometimes. And in high school, I was an athletic training uh, student. So from the day in the morning when I went to class until about 7 or 8 p.m., I wasn't eating. Um, and I would do that inconsistently. I had the craziest routines around food and the craziest rituals. So some days I would eat and then some days I wouldn't eat. And I would stick to those strict type of schedules and that is disorder eating, okay? So if you find yourself skipping meals just for the sake of skipping meals, um, and your body is physically hungry, but you're still skipping meals, then you have disorder eating patterns, okay? No shame, no judgment, just awareness. And this came on the back end of you being in diet cycles, okay? Another thing is you have anxiety around specific foods. One of the, uh, well, I'm gonna say two, two of the most common demonized things are carbs and sugar. And people tend to lump those things together as if natural sugar is processed the same way as artificial sugars. And then as well as complex carbs processing the same way as simple carbs. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that in your body. And you going through, you know, just your journey of healthier eating with this concept that um, carbs are bad for you or sugar is bad for you and they give you anxiety to even be around them that is a disorder eating pattern, okay? Food should not give you anxiety. It honestly shouldn't matter. If y'all hear this loud ass car in the background, I apologize. <laughs> but moving forward, uh, number, where were we on? Three, okay, three, you're feeling guilty and you feel shame around eating and you feel guilty and feel shame around your body. This was something that was huge for me, because even though, you know, even though I was young and adults sometimes don't realize they're doing this, but they do it. Um, I had a lot of issues around my body when I actually wasn't physically unhealthy. Okay. So that's what actually led to me going into diet cycles. And uh, I had a lot of shame around having a fat stomach. Okay. Even though my stomach was like, not even fat, like I really wish I had pictures because people, I, I posted a picture actually um, of me in seventh grade and people commented on the picture, basically, you know, insinuating I was lying because I was like, you know, this was around the time where I really started to have that body complex because people were telling me that I was short and fat all the time. And they're like, girl, like, shut up. There's nothing fat about this picture. And that is honestly how a lot of us um, just are in our own spaces, you may feel like I wasn't fat in that picture. However, because that was reinforced to me, that's how I felt. So I was making changes based on that belief, but that wasn't necessarily my truth. 
okay? So that was definitely a disordered eating pattern that was crazy in hell. I'm gonna try to move this a little bit faster because we got a little bit more to go. But using exercise and food restriction and fasting or purging as a way for you to make up for bad uh, food choices that you've made or the bad foods that you've consumed, that is absolutely absolutely a disordered eating pattern. If you find yourself doing that, you're nine times out of 10 restricting yourself around food, okay? And you're also in diet cycles that aren't going to support you in creating that healthier lifestyle that you truly want to have, okay? Sorry about that. So number two, number two is that you are dieting and dieting increases cravings. This is why you should stop, okay? Dieting actually increases cravings. And a lot of people feel like, you know, I'm, I'm starting this diet and I can't have sugar, whatever. So you feel like your body is actually trying to sabotage your goals by making you crave sugar and things like that. But your body is reacting to a lot of different things. Your weight isn't just controlled by what it is that you eat and uh, the activity that you do. Your weight is also controlled by your beliefs. So if you um, are putting yourself into patterns where you're not feeding yourself consistently, your body doesn't know what to do, okay? Your body is all over the place, like what is going on? So when it gets around food and you see food, it starts to uh, make you feel like you have to have that food because you've been starving yourself, uh, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, right? But you've been starving yourself through the process of dieting and your body is just trying to find some balance. OK, so if you want to stop having to fight all these damn cravings, stop dieting. It is absolutely going to support you. Yes, there are some things that you may need to do physically to help you, um, you know, release some of your attachments to sugar and things like that, like a good detox that may help. However, it is not just about your physical body. You have to think well-rounded if you really want to be consistently healthier, OK? Another thing, another reason why you should stop dieting is because diets cause weight cycling. I just talked about this a minute ago, but we're going to go into it a little bit more because a lot of people feel like I'm going to start a diet. I'm going to lose weight. Life is going to be better. That is absolutely not the truth. Actually, research, research proves to us that uh, dieting actually leads to weight cycling and weight cycling is, has been linked to higher uh, death rates. So Dieting actually does the exact opposite of what we intend to go into it for, and that's losing weight for most of us or being healthy for others of us. Either way, it's not going to work for you. Diets absolutely always lead to weight cycling, okay? So if for no other reason <laughs> for you to stop dieting is because you want to be a healthier person and it's absolutely not going to help you with what you um, intended it to help you for, okay? Another reason why you should stop dieting because dieting causes hyper awareness to food or a preoccupation with food. However you want to put it, you are always consumed with food when you are dieting. Okay, here it is from my experience. Don't have to live it in yours. When I was on a diet, I want to say like uh, 2015-ish. In like 2015, I decided I was going to go on like this real strict vegan-esque diet and I was going to cut out all of this stuff. And I promise I always thought about food. I was always thinking about what I was going to eat, what I actually ate. Uh, well, what am I, what am I going to eat later? <laughs> what am I eating right now? How is what I'm eating affecting my body? Like I was always preoccupied with food. Like um, even at the point where I would start to think a week or so in advance, like, okay, so if I'm going to do this, then I got to do that. And it just got so crazy to where my life was always, 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 I'm thinking about food all day long. And I just needed to be free from that because somebody had time for that, okay? <laughs> I got other stuff. I was, I was missing out on the moments and situations with my family and friends because even being at holiday situations and things like that, I'm like, okay, I can't eat that, can't eat that, can't, okay, can't have any of this stuff. So I might as well just sit over here and be miserable or go home or, you know, start to think, okay, maybe so I'm hungry. So can I have a little bit of that? And you, then you start to compromise, right? So for so many different reasons, dieting is hell on you if you truly want to be healthier and you truly don't want to have a hyper awareness to food and always worrying about um, what you're eating and how that's going to affect your body in the long term, okay? And then um, last but not least, 
this is the fifth thing I want to share with you today of why you should stop dieting. And that is because dieting disrupts your normal eating patterns. A lot of us don't realize this. This is actually a um, disordered eating pattern as well. Um, when you start to override your body's natural processes, which by definition, that's what dieters are, are doing. They're overriding their natural signals from their hormones and things like that. So your body is getting even further away from knowing when you're actually hungry or when you're actually satisfied. So things just start to go haywire. Your body is just like, girl, we try to figure it out and you're not helping us. <laughs> so things just start going different. You start to have cravings, your hormones start acting differently, your metabolism's all jacked up. You start to be more bloated. You may start to be more constipated than you usually are. Your urine may change in color and things like that. Like your body is just going crazy, just simply trying to help you balance and trying to help you be healthy against your own efforts. Okay. So if you truly want to be consistently healthier in your eating in your eating habits and your way of life, period, then I highly recommend that you stop dieting, not just because that's a program that I'm pushing, but really because it is linked to you not being healthier in the long term. Like, do you really want to go through the rest of this stuff? <laughs> like all those five things that I mentioned, do you really want to continue to go through those things? And you don't have to. You absolutely do not have to. There are ways for you to create those consistently healthier eating habits that don't sacrifice your happiness and don't sacrifice good food and that don't keep you uh, preoccupied with food all of the time. And for me, I teach that in Diet Divorce Academy um, to my clients in a way that allows them to release things that may be holding them in diet cycles. Like for me, it was my body shame and things um, you know, that was what started it. But then also from there, there were um, moments of me feeling like I was in survival mode around food and things like that. So those are things that need to be addressed and things that need to be worked on for you to truly create the consistency that you want to have in the, uh, you know, lifestyle that you want to have and things like that. So if you know that you're tired of doing all of these things, you know that dieting causes weight cycling because you've been doing it. You know that it causes disordered eating patterns because you just saw yourself in the things that I just shared with you. If you know that you're ready for something different, then I want you to drop down in the comments and book your food freedom consultation. Because what we're going to do is sit down and talk for about 30 minutes about exactly what has been keeping you stuck exactly what has uh, led you to dieting and kept you in those cycles, but kept you away from the results that you truly want. We talk about that. And on the flip side, we also talk about exactly what you can do, actual steps. I'm not talking about some airy fairy, go out and do, you know, whatever. I mean, actual step by step. What is the very next thing that you can do to get you out of these diet cycling patterns and into a consistently healthier lifestyle? you know that that is for you, then go ahead to the comments and click on the link. It is bit.ly forward slash I'm ready, Danny, all lowercase bit.ly forward slash I'm ready, Danny, and book your food freedom consultation so we can get you out of these diet cycles that are really not going to serve you. They didn't serve me. They have not served any of my clients. And I want to be clear about this. When I say that diets don't work and you should stop doing them, it's not that a diet can't help you lose weight on, uh, you know, some scale or another. That it's not that. My focus is not your weight, okay? My focus is your overall health, your overall lifestyle. What is your physical health, your spiritual health, your emotional health, your mental health? How is all of that in alignment? It's not just about your weight. So if you're coming over here and you want to book your food freedom consultation just because you want to talk about your weight loss. I'm probably not the coach for you because we're going a lot deeper than that to figure out what's really holding you back so you can have the true freedom that you want to have in your health journey, okay? So I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you have been a dieter, if you know somebody who is dieting and they you've noticed these patterns and things, I want you to go ahead and share this with them because you don't have to live in these cycles for you to consistently eat healthier without sacrificing your happiness or good food, okay? I'll see you in your food freedom consultation. We'll talk soon.